Evening guys, welcome back to my balcony. So the, the other one that I did actually from the balcony, uh, people seem to dig it, or a couple of people seem to dig it, and also gave me a chance to like really quickly like engage with you and answer a couple of questions. And off the back of the, the last question that was a G-Man asked, uh, we got another comment that I think we could just to like talk about a little bit um, from Oh Na Na Nawu, Navu. Nabu. Not too sure to pronounce that, but anyway. Uh, so he answered um, G Man's question all about um, the difference between dark wash and the difference between raw, uh, which answered the last one. I'll put a link to that somewhere around here. Anyway, he answers by saying basically, dark wash denim uh, from any of these stores will fade slower than a pair of raws. These jeans are usually sold, sprayed with chemical solution that is used in military garments to reduce fading. With months of hard wearing and washing, these jeans will fade too. Raw denim uses a rope dye method that soaks the jeans in indigo, then takes the fabric out, soaks them again, etc. This gets layers and layers of indigo on the fabric, uh, which in time will fade a lot faster and more naturally. So, yes, that's right, and it's also wrong in a couple of ways. Um, not to not to demean old Navu, um, but just I thought I'd sort of set the record straight a little bit here. So, yeah, first off, soaked this chemical. I'm not 100% sure about that. I mean, these guys are trying to trying to cut cost on every single level and soaking this sort of cheap denim with a chemical that's going to retard the fading process. It's probably just too much for them, they probably just don't care because they're not expecting somebody to wear these jeans for more than two or three months before they either fall apart or they, they just get thrown away because the next sort of fashion's coming along. And that chemical does sound like something that's going to be expensive and it's also putting another step into the manufacturing process. So I'm really not too sure if that happens. Maybe for some higher end denims that are that are post weaving processes that they go through that will really keep the uh, the, the indigo sort of solid locked into it but there's also blue dyes that are not indigo that are some other kind of chemicals that are much more sort of fast they're actually much better dye stuffs than indigo is I mean the point of using indigo kind of is that it fades um what else what else what else so you just saw blah 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 with uh, months of hard wearing and washing the jeans will fade too so I'm just wondering if these jeans haven't been through that uh, sort of chemical process that uh, stops the, the fading process, then I'm imagining that it's because a lot of the, the possibilities for the denim to fade with sort of a nice contrasty fade have been taken care of before, even if it's not gone through any distressing, you know, it's not got these sort of fake honeycombs and whiskers. A lot of that possibility for the... Um, for that nice contrasty fading will have gone because a lot of the excess indigo will have been taken out before this. Ah, uh, what else do we have? Um, yeah, this this um, uh, rope dye. Um, so like like the like the blog like the blog. So it's almost there, but it's not actually the jeans or the fabric that it's soaked. It's the um, individual sort of strands of yarn that get soaked. Um, in indigo. It's like a, a big sort of fat rope that goes down into tubs then goes back up and it's allowed to oxidize then goes back down so it is there multiple soaks but that happens before the the fabric's been woven and that's why you see on jeans you've got like a dark outer surface and a light inner surface because it's a three, three by one weft. Um, yeah there are there are processes that fabrics will go through and uh, fabric dyeing for example that's kind of what you were talking about with the fabric being dyed and there's also garment dyeing as well when after the garment's been sewn together it will be over dyed with i don't know black blue pink orange whatever the color might be um but in the case of jeans unless it actually sort of says this has been over dyed yeah they've all been yarn dyed um 
Now this is a thing where Onavo Nawu really nails it. He says, also, um, mind that a big chunk of the price is paying livable wages to the workers, uh, construction with vintage machines, proprietary fabrics, stitching, buttons and leather. And yes, that is all absolutely true. Um, I mean, one of the things that I love and have discussed before is actually the sustainability that's just inherent in a pair of right, high quality salvage jeans. Um, the fabrics of a higher quality is going to last longer. It's probably been milled in a place that's paying fair wages and um, any sort of water that's been used in the process or any chemicals has actually been filtered out before going back into the environment. Um, it's a slower process, um, so yeah, as again, higher quality. Um, then when they've gone to be sewn together, again, the people who put them together will be paid a proper living wage you'd hope if it's in the states or if it's over in japan especially and also if you expect that quality that you're paying for it's not guaranteed but you, you certainly hope that these brands are are paying their staff well and i think certainly the majority of the good denim brands is going to come out of the states going to come out of europe or going to come out of japan you're going to find that the workers are paid a very very fair living wage and you're getting a quality done that uh, quality garment at the end of it and yeah that can be construction with vintage machines but more modern machines are used as well um especially when we're talking about higher volumes um i mean the, the old vintage machines are fantastic they're great and they're used by denim brands who are really trying to sort of recreate this vintage look um but more modern machines are used, it's just the reality. And plus there's not too many of these old machines still kicking around. So yeah, I, I wouldn't even want to guess about percentages, but uh, it's not always vintage machines. Um, proprietary fabrics, that is denim that will only be available to one single denim brand. Um, I did a story over on Rope Dye, um, which I guess, I'll put a link in the description. I don't think I can put a link directly on the film just now um yeah i did a story on benzac they've got their own proprietary fabrics um he developed the special number one that's jeans that i'm wearing just now that's my new project pair um and that's just yeah it's a fabric that only that brand can have and they've developed with that specific mill um so it's like it's like a rite of passage for for brands to go through Stitching, uh, I guess that means construction or quality of threads, um, methods of stitching maybe. Um, buttons and leather. Yeah, I mean, good buttons are very, very important. Having the, the buttons set properly is very, very important so it's not going to sort of pull out and fall apart. And a good quality button that's sort of branded with the, um, with the brand's logo or the brand's name or something costs a little bit extra. Uh, and leather as well, yeah, I mean also good quality leather cost too, um, whatever it might be. I mean take, ooh, who is that now? Damn it, I've forgotten. There is a brand, and I don't want to get this wrong, but it's either 316 or Telesin. They get Tanner Goods in Portland to do their back patches for them. Who is that? That's embarrassing. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, sorry. Either one of these brands. Well, they both use fantastic leather. That's that's for sure. Um, is it getting a bit dark? One second. Yeah, either of these brands, they use that high quality leather, and it's going to cost a little bit extra. Um, it's also that will be domestically sourced in the U.S. I believe. Um, which is also going to going to bump up the price. So, yeah, you're absolutely right in that in that own own Nuva. I wish I knew how to pronounce that. I wish you could have like a little sound bite on YouTube where you just clicked on it and the person could tell you exactly how they're pronouncing their username. But anyway, yeah, your second statement was bang on. Uh, first statement I think was a little little bit off, and I just wanted to address a couple of things. Um, yeah, and guys. I actually really enjoy this way of working. Um, I, I There's some times where I just kind of have to script things out, it's a lot to say, and if I'm tripping over myself all the time, I miss stuff out, or like, it takes so many takes, it takes so long to stitch together. 
But these little like five, ten minute just like chats in the evening, that's really, really cool. I can get those out just like that and I can answer some questions, I can engage with you some more. You guys can comment as well, you can just come back to me. That's a really, really cool way of working, so I'd like to kind of encourage this going forward. And especially, I mean, I'm sitting with a cup of tea, it's finally warm again in Berlin, and yeah, this is just a nice way to spend an evening. So, yeah, I'm going to switch you off just now, I'm going to finish my tea, then I'm going to go to edit this and hopefully get out tonight. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, as always, if you're not subscribed, could you hit that subscribe button, and if you'd hit that like button, it makes a difference to all us YouTubers out there. Um, Head over to Instagram, we're getting rolling with this and we're giving you like daily inspiration for denim and other like quality accessories and goods and like just really good craft stuff that you'd be interested in. Um, plus posting stuff from other like really on point Instagrammers that are into the denim game as well. So that's actually getting really, really good fun. We're also getting rolling really well on some really interesting content that's been coming out lately over on the website that's written content. So if you're not just if you're a bit bored with hearing me talk all the time because I do talk a little bit too much, then head over there and read up on some stuff. And until next time, thank you very much again, and I will see you in the next vlog.